Where are you now? The ceremony is starting. I shouted into the phone, finally reaching my husband, Keith. On a family trip to Italy? On our daughter's wedding day. To this, Keith just laughed and hung up the phone. Family, indeed. I repeated that thought in my mind, as if realizing them anew. I stared at the disconnected phone for a while, but soon shifted my focus and reached out to someone else. About the matter I had requested before, I need it done as soon as possible, starting now. I spoke with determination. Yes, I leave everything in your hands. Please start immediately. Understood came a very spirited response from the other end. By the way, this contact was with a civil engineering company that has been close to my family home since long ago. And inwardly, I fought to myself while suppressing my laughter. Go ahead and enjoy just this moment. Your so-called family trip because this might be your last pleasure. My name is Diana Woods, 52 years old. I'm a housewife with two children. My husband, Keith, is 55 years old. Our marriage, about 30 years ago, was a sort of arranged marriage intended to bring our companies closer together. But that marriage life is likely to end soon. It's due to Keith's recurring issues himself. There were initially no signs of separation during the early times of our marriage. At least, I thought we could build a warm home together, despite the marriage being largely for business reasons. Keith thought so too, at that time. That changed after our two children were born. Shortly after getting married, I got pregnant and gave birth to our first child, John. The following year, our daughter, Lucy, was born. The children were a joy, but parenting was harder than I imagined. At that time, Keith, just around 30, was still in his training period at his father's company. Perhaps that was the reason, or maybe it was just too much stress. Even when he came home, he didn't participate in parenting. Despite seeing me overwhelmed with the cries of our two children, he did nothing. Rather, something seemed to have cooled off and he began using work as an excuse to stay away from home more and more. Well, honestly, I had my regrets too. At the time, I was overwhelmed with childcare and insisted on handling it without anyone's help. The one who helped me was my mother back at my family home. My parents are gone now. But when I think back on those times, I truly appreciate their presence. Without the housekeeper my mother arranged for me, I would have completely succumbed to parenting stress. But once that period was over, the children were truly adorable. With Keith sinking into his work and barely coming home, parenting became my life's purpose. However, I grew suspicious of Keith's prolonged absences and once asked him, where are you always going? Back then, Keith would dodge the question with vague responses, but when he failed to attend our daughter's and son's birthday parties, I finally confronted him. You do your thing, and I'll handle what needs to be done here. I couldn't imagine what he felt needed to be done. What's so important that you'd skip our son and daughter's events? I snapped, questioning him heatedly. In response, Keith would say this. 
You know I have a sister who's much younger than me, right? You mentioned she's 13 years younger. Was it Emily? Yes, it's Emily. She has her coming of age party soon. So I need to discuss a few things about that with our parents. His tone suggested he prioritized his sister over our children, making me retort sharply. What did you just say? But Keith responded as if it were the most natural thing. You've been so busy with the kids, ignoring me, so you probably didn't know, but they're going through a tough time too. I was at a loss for words, but this kind of incident kept happening. Keith started making excuses because of his sister even for attending open houses at the kindergarten and elementary school. He wouldn't come to birthday parties of the kids, but would go to adult celebrations. He skipped the open houses, but attended Emily's graduation ceremony. What exactly is home to Keith, and who does he consider his family? I often wondered, and so, I ended up hosting our children's birthday parties alone and attending their open houses and graduation ceremonies by myself. In our children's milestone photos, the father's figure was absent. Eventually, the children also realized that their father did not participate in their events. As they faced exams, college admissions, and job searches, they moved forward on their own volition. Both would first explore what they wanted to do on their own, find suitable schools, and consider if they could get admitted before consulting their parents. To me, they would merely ask, I want to go here, what do you think? Because I don't want to burden you, Mom. I heard these words as early as middle school. It's not bad that they know what they want to do. It also shows they have a strong sense of independence. But as a parent, especially seeing their father and realizing he couldn't be relied upon, I couldn't help feeling sad. I hardly set a good example myself. Since getting married, I had been a full-time housewife. Well, occasionally, I was called upon due to my family's company business. It seemed to have been considering leaving me some assets early on, and my brother agreed with this too. My parents were both deceased about 10 years ago. They passed on when they were in their 70s. The company has been entrusted to my brother, Kevin, and I'm currently receiving a decent portion from the inheritance apart from that. As for Keith's sister, Emily, spoiled by Keith and her parents, she landed a job at a subsidiary through her father's connections after her coming-of-age party and university graduation ceremonies but it seemed she was never really into working. After working for two years, she quit her job as easily as if she were about to start her bridal training. Apparently, she never liked working in the first place and ended up living a leisurely life at her parents' home. And again, neither her parents nor her brother Keith had anything to say about it. It seemed like they were actually pleased that she couldn't handle it and were happy that she didn't work. Later, she actively pursued arranged marriages, but they always ended up broken off for some reason. Apparently, most of these breakups were due to Keith's opposition. And whenever Keith opposed, Emily would simply take his word for it, saying, if Big Brother says so. Before you know it, she's in her 40s. 
I heard she's just staying there without getting married at all. By the way, her parents are now in their 80s. Unlike my parents who passed away early, my in-laws are still robust and active, but you'd think they would still have some concerns. Yet, Emily doesn't do anything and continues to live her carefree life. Because he's still healthy, my father-in-law remains the company president, and Keith shows no signs of taking over. Keith probably wants to take the reins soon, but it seems his father is not ready to step down. I don't know the reasons for that. I had lost all fondness for Keith a long time ago. My brother and his wife also said it would be best to get divorced at some point, and with the kids now independent, I'm considering starting a second life of my own. Fortunately, my parents left me a considerable estate early on. With that, I can start something new or take a break if I choose. I've been thinking about it for a long time. I was also gathering evidence that would be advantageous for me in the divorce. My brother's lawyer has been advising me on this matter. However, an event that put these plans on hold occurred. That's because Lucy is getting married. The groom is eight years older than her, a colleague at her brother's company, where Lucy met him as a senior employee. He's quite capable and was said to be likely transferred to an overseas branch soon. By the way, Lucy, having seen Emily as a bad example, made sure never to disclose her family connections at work. Boasting about such things is foolish, just like in school. If you flaunt being rich, you're bound to be disliked. That was Lucy's reasoning. I did try to inform Keith about the wedding. But as expected, he kept saying he was too busy, and every time I brought it up, he would quickly make an excuse to leave. I just responded with Yo, oh, is that so? Nevertheless, I informed him of the date and venue via invitations and messages. But I didn't bother confirming the schedule directly with Keith. And on the day of the wedding, we all headed to the venue. There was no sign of Keith showing up even in the morning of the wedding day. I tried contacting him. Where are you? The ceremony is starting. On a family trip in Italy. I can't help but blink at those words. On your daughter's wedding day. To this, Keith just laughed and hung up the phone. I sighed and looked up at the ceiling for a few seconds. Family, huh, family. I repeated it several times in my mind. It's probably a trip to Italy with his parents and Emily. I knew it, but to come to this point, I'm genuinely appalled. For Keith, family ultimately means his parents and siblings, not us. Of course, I've known this for a long time. I didn't expect much from an arranged marriage. He probably felt the same. The difference between Keith and me is, I initially wanted to make a real home. And Keith did not. I continued this charade for over 20 years, all for the sake of the children. The kids themselves might have thought they didn't even need a father. Still, I wanted to maintain a certain social standing until both became adults. That might have just been my own selfishness. The kids probably thought it would have been much easier without such pretenses. Well, fine. 
I took a deep breath and made a call again. Hello, it's me, yes, Diana Woods. Regarding the matter I've asked you about before, I'd like it done as soon as possible, starting now. I spoke assertively to the somewhat distant voice on the other end. Yes, I leave everything in your hands, so please start immediately. Understood, came a very spirited reply. The person on the other end was from a civil engineering company that has had a long-standing relationship with my family. And inwardly, I fought to myself while suppressing my laughter. Go ahead, enjoy yourself for now. Your so-called family trip. Because this might be your last enjoyment. Then, a month later, I received a call. I answered it on my tablet. Then there appeared the image of a lawyer with a beaming smile. Ms. Woods, or rather, should I say Ms. Fields now? The lawyer used my maiden name. Does that mean the papers have been processed? My voice bounced with inadvertent excitement. Yes. I've made sure everything is in order. This lawyer, who appeared on my screen, was affiliated with my family's company. I continued, asking him, Could you tell me what has happened in these past two weeks? I thought you might ask, so I've prepared everything. Facing the lawyer on the screen, I couldn't help but smile and laugh. Currently, there's a distance as long as a fifth of the Earth's circumference between me and the lawyer. I've bought a house in Germany. That's because my daughter's husband, upon their marriage, was assigned to transfer to an overseas branch, as previously mentioned. He was worried about my language skills. That's what Lucy said. But, you know, you won't know until you go, and once you're there, you'll manage somehow. So it's okay. I've always managed to make it work like that. Lucy and her husband are now at the German branch. And I live in a separate building on their new property. Partly for security reasons. The lawyer, whom I was watching, seemed to have adjusted some equipment on his side. First, this. He showed me what had happened during Keith and his family's trip to Italy. Wait a minute. Why can't we get into this hotel today? That's my father-in-law shouting. He was wearing a gorgeous shirt under the bright blue sky. I'm sorry. Today, the venue was reserved for a wedding and the reception. What? The top hotel in Florence. Yes, that day, there was a wedding at that location. It was Lucy and her husband's. By the way, Keith and his group had flown from the United States to Italy, but by that time, we had already headed towards Florence. We planned to relax at the resort before the ceremony. They didn't even know about it. I had informed them on the day, just in case. It's ridiculous that they didn't even know we were in Italy. It really shows how little they cared about us. That's strange. The lawyer found it baffling. You did tell them the destination, right, Diana? I did, through postcards and messages. They usually don't catch me. So it was a surprise that my call went through on the wedding day, probably just to show off their family trip. That's ridiculous, the lawyer laughed. The ceremony will be held abroad. I left clear instructions that it will be at this hotel in Italy. And let, what's going on with them saying they can't stay when they come right up to the hotel? 
At the very least, they could have mentioned they were there to attend the wedding. In the video, the disgruntled family was shown. Emily, looking confused and unable to understand what was being said, was also visible. The explanation was in English, but the whispers around were in Italian. She majored in Italian at university, so she might have been able to hold a conversation decently, but there's a gap of about 20 years. It seems she's completely lost touch with Italian conversation by now. The whispers of the surrounding staff indicated that these were the people who were supposed to attend the wedding today. Indeed, we had instructed the employees accordingly. If these people came to attend the wedding, let them in. If they came just for dining or staying, then not that day since we reserved the place for the wedding. The wedding was grand and my daughter, her husband, and I departed from an international airport in Italy to Germany on the same day. We had no plans to return to the U.S. Meanwhile, fuming with anger, they apparently intended to return to the U.S. from the same international airport. But they were stopped there. Because Keith's card had been declined, this moment, too, was captured on video by the staff following them. What? My credit can't be used? This one, too? Yes, sir. The name on the card isn't yours, is it? Indeed, that was the case. Keith had taken my credit and bank cards, so I had them stopped. The bank account in question was my personal asset. Keith had dipped into it, but I pretended not to notice. Doing such things was bound to come out eventually. I had another account set aside that I could freely use, so even if one was depleted, it wouldn't affect my lifestyle. I overlooked it to gather evidence. Damn. Why doesn't it work anymore? It's probably because the owner stopped it, right? What do you mean? We can't get home if you say that. I don't have that much cash on me. The staff, sighing at Keith's outburst, simply said, These cards cannot be used, so you cannot board the flight back to the U.S. With that, they were driven out of the airport. Left with no choice, they had to return to Florence and reportedly borrowed money from the consulate to get back home. It took them a significant amount of time to get to that point. It seems they did not come up with the idea of relying on the consulate very easily. Moreover, they tried borrowing money from acquaintances first because they were embarrassed, which took even more time. Ultimately, when they realized that was not possible, they finally begged the embassy for help. Their visa had already expired, and they had no room to care about appearances anymore. They were thoroughly squeezed at the consulate. After all, the cause was a stopped card. They were held a bit due to perceived issues with their actions. Then they barely made it back to the U.S. and repaid the travel expenses to the consulate from his own account. But when they came home to complain to me, there was nothing left. I couldn't help but burst out laughing at the sight of them then. What the hell is this? Keith screamed in front of where our home used to be. And my in-laws dropped their luggage. Our house was built nearly 30 years ago by my parents as a new home when we got married. I had always maintained it well, 
so it could have been sold if I wanted. But it was my property, and since I planned to live in Germany, I didn't want to leave anything behind. So I only stored Keith's clearly personal items in a storage unit, and had everything else disposed of by a service. That was the other call I made on the day of the wedding. What on earth is going on? Keith was scratching his head, stomping his feet, and finally, he kneeled and started pounding on his suitcase. I couldn't help but laugh out loud when I saw that. Then Lucy came over when she heard me laughing. What's going on, Mom? Lucy, just look at your father. He's in quite a state. He's not my father anymore. While saying this, Lucy looked at the screen I was pointing at. In the screen, there was a for sale sign in front of the now empty lot. Ah, uh, this used to be our house. It's completely empty now. Lucy said that with a wry smile. She had always found it creepy how her father doted on his sister more than her, especially during her adolescence. I knew she had always said she wanted to cut ties with him as soon as possible. I'm glad to hear that makes you happy, Lucy. The lawyer chimed in. No, really, thank you for the entertaining footage, but that's not all, is it? I asked him. Oh no, there's more. The lawyer said with a mischievous grin. Next up is this, again, a frustrated Keith appeared, glaring at something. What is this all about? The sound of him slamming the desk was audible. It's nothing unusual. Your wife, Diana, asked me to fill out these divorce papers. Diana would never say such a thing. How can you be so sure? Keith started to say something, then seemed to have realization. Right, the card. Why did she have to stop it? As Keith muttered, the lawyer responded in a matter-of-fact tone. Well, of course. Anyone would do the same if they found out someone was using a large amount of money from their account without permission. Why were you using Diana's card in the first place? Didn't you have your own card? Keith just grunted and fell silent. Or were you perhaps lacking that much financially way? We had investigated that area too. To be honest, there isn't much money in Keith or his parents' accounts currently. Just a tiny bit for business operations while the rest had been siphoned from my savings. He tucked the card from me with his own interpretation that it was family money, without any permission. So when I said stop, that was all there was to it. Furthermore, after stopping it, we discovered a significant amount of money had been spent. Embezzlement. No. This was supposed to be marital assets, right? Not at all. What are you talking about? Didn't you know? The lawyer asked incredulously. The funds you were using belonged to Diana herself from before your marriage. Before our marriage? No, that can't be. Diana never said that. She probably didn't feel the need to say anything. It would have been fine as long as nothing happened. But something did happen, didn't it? What? Keith stood up abruptly. Diana said there was no point in being a family with you guys anymore. At least, your children no longer consider you their father. What did you say? That's to be expected. Do you even know where your children went to college? What they studied? and who they married. And above all, do you know where your daughter's wedding took place? 
Keith was at a loss for words. By the way, the lawyer then provided the date and location of Lucy's wedding. Keith's expression changed dramatically. He muttered to himself, no way. Yes, it was at the hotel you tried to stay at that day. That place, Keith leaned forward. That's right. Didn't you hear that there was a wedding going on that day? Sure, maybe. But why wouldn't they let us in then? That's simple. The lawyer explained the instructions I had given to the hotel. Diana had told them in advance. Why don't you check your phone? Haven't you checked at all, or did you have another phone? Faced with these rapid-fire questions, Keith remained silent. Well, if you think about it, it makes sense he wouldn't connect. Keith probably had multiple phones originally, and the one that connected to me was usually turned off. I had anticipated this because my messages were unread too often. When I asked if he had changed phones, he would at least give me the number. I deliberately didn't ask that. It was part of my plan. Evidence of my messages was left intact. I left numerous voicemails. I made sure to sound increasingly agitated, asking, are you listening? Are you there? I want you to see this. Of course, the messages were the same. I had tried other methods too. Yet Keith had shut out everything that connected to me. The lawyer then continued. So, Diana will also be seeking compensation for the misuse of funds, and she's filing for damages for your neglect of the family. Ah, and I've been informed by her family that they will also cut off any financial support to your company. What? Let me see Diana. Please let me see her. Keith begged, nearly in tears. No, that would be pointless. Why? Where is Diana now? She's definitely not in the U.S. anymore. At that moment, Keith's face was a sight too pitiful to behold. After the wedding, Diana and everyone immediately went to the United States. What? And you were detained while she left with ease. Hearing this, Keith clenched his fists, trembling. Lucy, watching beside him, couldn't suppress a snicker. So, what do you think? The lawyer asked us. Very entertaining footage. Is there more? Yes, there is. This is from a recent event after Diana's divorce was finalized, which also led to the dissolution of the business partnership. Kevin and I had personally visited the company to record this. The lawyer then showed me another video. The support is cut off. What does that mean? Our company can't survive without your support. This time it was my in-laws who raised their voices. Both of them, with sunburned faces, asked the question. Yes, what's with the sunburn? Did you go on a trip somewhere? On the screen, Kevin was asking my father-in-law. So the wedding, um. Lucy's. Yes, yes, Lucy's wedding. It was in Italy. Kevin then grinned slyly. Actually, I was there that day. The two of them gasped. Of course, it was my lovely niece's wedding. My wife and I both attended the ceremony in Italy that day. Oh, and by the way, I'm fully aware of what you were doing that day. Sweat dripped profusely from my in-laws' faces. And yet, you didn't immediately remember Lucy's name. How little interest did you have in those kids? 
Kevin pressed them at this point. So think, you can even remember the name of one of your two grandchildren. What does that say about you? Well, no, those kids never really took to us. Whether they took to you or not, have you ever done anything for them? Both were at a loss for words. But then, suddenly, someone burst into the room. Wow, heavyweight. Amazing. How old is this person? Lucy gasped and blurted that out. The person who suddenly appeared on screen was Emily. She's 42 years old. My husband is 10 years older than her. Oh no, she was the Kittle Tant. Indeed, in today's terms. Now that you mention it, she's been a Kittle living at home for 20 years. I wonder what she'll do next. I wondered aloud as I looked back at the screen. If the support is cut off, what will we do? What should I do? There, not the lawyer, but Emily was confronting her parents. Well, what's going to happen now, I wonder. My father-in-law was lost for words as he muttered that. Well, the divorce is finalized, and as such, we no longer have any reason to provide you with financial aid. What? Why did you let the divorce go through? Don't you understand by now? There were many reasons, but the decisive factor was you misusing funds. But those were marital assets. Kevin sighed deeply. Keith also claimed that, didn't he? Well, of course, we were concerned about that, which is why we had already gifted Diane and her premarital assets as a living inheritance. Does that mean you didn't trust us? Realistically, how can there be any trust for someone who has misused his wife's assets? Moreover, just how long? How long have you left your own family members, including Diana and Lucy, unattended? My in-laws were speechless. Even I, their uncle, attended their birthday parties. Of course, Diana came to our house too. Well, the fact that we stopped talking about such things a long time ago probably means you weren't thought of as family anymore. It seemed like Kevin was enjoying blaming my in-laws at every opportunity. Yes, just as you imagined those three as a separate family. Oh, yes, I recall on the day of the wedding, Keith told Diana he was going to Italy with his family. Startled, my father-in-law looked up, and my mother-in-law covered her face, exclaiming, What have you done? Family, who? Oh, which family are we talking about? Kevin said that with a broad smile directed at my parents-in-law and Emily. That settled it completely, didn't it? How was that? Thank you. I'm very satisfied. Please proceed with the next steps. There aren't really any more steps to take. Lucy and I exchanged glances and laughed that the lawyer's words. The lawyer would keep us informed about the developments. Occasionally, Kevin would also contact us. Firstly, my former in-law's company, unable to secure any loans, faced bankruptcy and was eventually merged into my brother's company. We absolutely must save the employees. It seems the initial reason for supporting the company was because of the quality of what the employees produced not because the management of my former in-law's company was good. I wasn't fully aware of these details, but Kevin explained them to me again. My former father-in-law was ousted from his position as president. They had to sell their property and moved into a rental. 
They are now struggling with what to do next. The ordeal had aged them considerably, and health issues began to surface, once maintained by sheer willpower. Keith is now regretting not having booked a spot in a retirement home in advance. It seems financially challenging for them to enter one now. Keith managed to secure re-employment at an acquaintance's company. Given their history, the acquaintance reluctantly hired Keith. But after the divorce incident, the acquaintance realized he was unreliable. Initially offered a full-time position, he was demoted to a contract employee. It was a clear message that he could be easily dismissed if he stepped out of line. Though lenient, I hoped he would continue working to help pay off his debts. As for Emily, well, that's a difficult situation. She now lives in a rental with her parents. But having been a kiddolt for 20 years, she is truly incapable of much. Her savings are depleted, so her desperate parents are pushing her to find work through the employment service. However, her job expectations are too high, making it difficult to find employment. Well, that's only natural. They even considered marriage as an option, but of course, that's a high hurdle too. What exactly had she been doing for 20 years, I wonder in disbelief. Yet, our life on German is wonderfully bright and clear. Living abroad has its risks, of course. John, still in the US, often calls to check on us, but I reassure him each time that all is well. Come visit sometime soon, and if you can, bring a nice wife with you. John blushed and remained silent as I said that. As long as we choose to live in a safe area, life remains calm. Slowly learning unfamiliar German, getting along with other American families, and thinking about what to do next under the bright sun and dry wind make every day enjoyable. There is a timing for divorce. I won't say my 30 years of married life were all bad, but it's because I let go now that I can have a future. From here on out, I want to live a fun and energetic life with my daughter and her husband.